Everyone look on the board. Read that verse with me. John 6, verse 12 to 13. Read aloud. One to go. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And I did. Say, let nothing be wasted. Say it again. Say, I refuse to be a waster of resources. Let's look at it practically. You eat food in the house and you dump it. Let's take care of that. You eat food in the house. Be vigilant. You eat food in the house and you dump the food. When the next day you never doesn't have food. Etymology. <laughs> you wear clothes. Listen to me carefully. Now, those clothes are undersized for you. But that you give to someone, you better dump it in the trash can. Say bad manager. Say waste of resources. You leave bread in the house and it ferments. I always use this look at practical examples in the house. And the next door neighbor is needing food. You are abusing God's resource because you own nothing. God created all things. He gave you management responsibility over the things He created. Whatever you abuse, you motivate God to take it away from you. Let me take that same one. Say, whatever I abuse, whatever I, abuse I actually motivate God to take it away from me. Now, you feel it when you say that, I'm happy. Praise God. Now, he instructed them. This is a story of 5,000 men being fed. How many disciples were there? How many disciples did Jesus have? Good. How many loaves of bread were there? Five loaves, according to that John 6. How many fishes? Two. Now, say little. If you are not faithful with this little thing, Luke 16, verse 10, who can give you much? Jesus took seed and multiplied the seed and it fed 5,000 men. Guess what? All the people fed were, in my conclusion, studying this, were careless, irresponsible managers. Guess what? They ate, they were left of us, no one cared to pick it. I hope tomorrow they will not be hungry again. Oh, oh look up. You didn't hear that. I hope they will not be hungry tomorrow. You understand me? Jesus now said, hey, 12 guys, you are learning to be like me. This is my way when it comes to using resources. Go after where they start, maybe from here to this road. 5,000, think about that. Women are counted and children. Listen to that carefully, please. There's a principle I want to drive right there for you to catch. He said, go and pick the leftovers. Say leftovers. Or the pieces. So that nothing should be wasted. That means in Jesus' conclusion, the whole human race is abusing resources. They obeyed and they went and filled 12 baskets. Listen, listen, listen. They went and did what? How many disciples were there? So each disciple had a responsibility of one basket. What lesson is he teaching them? Question, how long will it take to feed this basket? How long he was teaching them the principle of diligence in management club? <laughs> diligence. Commitment. Discipline. Patience. And of course, what we call dexterity. And above all, excellence. Get it done and get it done thoroughly. That means they went, you remember, pick and go, pick and go. Uh -huh. oh, pick and throw, pick and throw. Primary school, we used to sing that. Marianne is here, you may not know that one. We used to sing that and pick things, including it was too dirty and primitive in those days. We even forget to wash our hands. Sometimes when we pick those uh, leftovers of uh, sugar cane, you know what we do. Don't ask me. Look left and right and take care of it. Praise God. So he said, <laughs> let nothing be wasted. Did you catch a revelation right there? Jesus, 
his heart bleeds for people who mismanage resources. You mismanage money, you mismanage time, you mismanage anything. And according to God's conclusion in Luke chapter 19, the parable of the talents he gave to them. Anyone who abuses anything entrusted to them is actually a wicked person. You wicked self. You should have taken my money and put it in the bank so that when I come, I take it with interest. Think about it. If wasting of resources is God's problem, which is true, let's prove it. Go to Luke chapter 15. Praise God. Say, I refuse to be a waster. Come and say it loud. Say, I refuse to be a waster. I refuse to be a waster. So let's look at Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. Now this is a picture of God and two categories of his children. Follow me. And the younger of them said to his father, it looks, when people become, it looks like rather when people become young, when people are young, there is a tendency to be abusive with resources. How many understand what I'm saying? The younger of them came to the father and said, Father, say father. father. The word father means source, my supplier, my sustenance. Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his lady. He gave it to them. Guess what? Verse 18. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. Say, gathered all together. Say it again. Say it again. And took his journey into a far off country. What did he do? And then wasted. What did he do? Wasted his substance with riotous living. He spent everything. He wasted it. He abused it. He mocked the resources. I, when I was studying this, I, I had so much harm in my heart of God. I believe this young boy went off to a far off country so no one holds him accountable. If they're not in that Yeah. His mind is made up to abuse anything given to him. And so he will live to a place where no one is going to question him. What did you do with the goods given to you? Listen to this carefully now. In the story for that, as he wasted it, check what happened. <laughs> and when he has spent all, say when he has spent all. When he has spent all. Now from today, he has to start investing and not spending. When he has spent all, you can be, if you study this, you begin to see the characteristics of a bad manager. Number one, he doesn't give accounts to anybody. He doesn't want to submit to authority. Uh oh, he is a spender and a waster. Of resources and he is someone giving it into lavish, cloudless living. The one who goes for luxuries when they can't afford, you understand that kind of thing? You are a student, you want to buy a suit for 45,000 francs, 50,000 francs. Praise God. <laughs> you see me wear a shoe for 30,000 francs, you compare. My man of God wears this, so I must get it. I hope you are walking like me. Amen. So you see, you are a bad manager. Any bad manager cannot give an account of their tithing life. Say tithing. Tithing. That's the surest, effective tool from God to begin training responsible, accountable managers in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. So when he has spent everything in that land, according to the Bible, it says a famine came in and he began to be in lack. Look at that verse. Say famine. Famine. In those days, the people relied on crops as a means of survival, agriculture, right? Farming to us today means economic crisis. When there will be inflation, deflation, when banks maybe are out of money. This is why I tell people it is absolute foolishness to stop money in a credit union or bank and the church has needs, God's money at that, and you are refusing to participate in it in the name of planning for my future. Planning is not wrong, but when it actually replaces God's prime priority, you have a problem as his manager. What about the day the credit union comes and says someone stole all the money and disappeared? Where did you put your treasure? You put it where rocks, moths, and thieves can access and steal it. That's exactly how banks crash and people cry. But if you are invested in it into the kingdom, you will never regret. How I many understand what I said? Praise God. 
Famine came in, say the day of testing will come. All of you listen to me right now, it will come. And those of you who are watching this, you will be tested. That day of famine will come. Matthew 7, Jesus said how that famine will look like. When it comes, depending on where you have put your foundation, you will fall or you will stand. Amen. Guess what? As this day of testing came, this man now got sense. He came to his senses. Before that, he even went to hustle for a job. Amen. Imagine there's a farmer in the same country, another person is employed, and another person is looking for a job. Think about it for a moment. One man is employed, another man is looking for a job. That means any faithful steward of any resource entrusted by God, all resources on earth belong to God. Anyone not even born again who can manage it responsibly will always be rewarded with more. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So it is possible for you to be recruiting people while others in a crisis are desperately looking for what to eat. That's why the rich grew rich when there's a crisis and the poor grew poorer. <laughs> Including some in church, say God forbid. On condition, let me give you the condition. You learn the principles of management. Amen. Amen. So, in conclusion, what is man's problem? Read that aloud. What is your problem and my problem? The wasting of what? Resources. <laughs> Praise God. See, even in church, there are people wasting resources. You can be anointed and yet a very bad manager of those resources. That's true. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God's problem is not giving you power. His problem is exactly what you're going to use for power. Do you know power is a resource? Yes, that's true. Many of you want anointing so much. I'm very careful praying for people for impartation. I'm really very careful. You see, if your pastor spends time learning the word of God too much, I'm not a fool. I know what I'm doing. The more of the word you know, the less of issues you have to deal with devils. I mean it. Satan act in the name of Jesus of his life. Whether he agitated and fell down or not, I don't care. By the authority and revelation from the word is gone. Praise God. Management is more important to God than the anointing that many of you are seeking today. Say seeking for anointing. Seeking for anointing. The grace of my papa, my mama, my uncle, my this thing. Amen. We have a problem. Go and manage yourself. You want to sit for anointing and you stay for two days without taking a bath. You keep things in your house disorganized for weeks. You cook food, you don't wash your pot in time. Amen. Even to copy notes in church, you cannot copy notes. When you leave that service, that message ended that service. You don't take responsibility, you're not accountable to nobody, you want power. God will disappoint you next tomorrow in Jesus' name. I will say amen to that one. God will disappoint you tomorrow in Jesus' name. No power for you until you have learned how to be an effective manager. God has no problem giving me power to raise dead people. He knows I'm careful. He has no problem giving me power to go out there for a crusade which shall be happening very soon and bringing people in. He knows I've grounded myself through thorough management of the time I've been given, resources I've been given, availability of everything to take care of his people. After they are healed, he knows I can teach them the word. So don't be jealous of me when I grow more. Praise God. And I can only grow more. Amen. Amen. Now, <laughs> here's the statement. If you cannot add value to anything that is given to you, listen now carefully, it means you are a bad manager. It's a value addition. It's an essential aspect of good stewardship. Say it again. Say value addition is an essential aspect of good stewardship. Let me prove to you. How will the administration of this place feel like if they come here and we have broken all their chairs? How will they feel like if they come here and we have repainted these walls and changed these wooden windows on their permission to glass windows? How will they feel like when they now come to this campus and notice ah, ah, that the security box, installation with box everywhere, privacy, uh, uh, that security has been enhanced because we pay the price to bring in power supply. That's good management. How would they feel like when they come, the doors are not locked instead? Other security locks are brought in. Good management. 
I'm speaking to all of you here who are renting. Be careful how you use someone else's property. Be very careful. It's a test for you. It predetermines if God should give you property of your own. Amen. Amen. Students, are we here? And the same thing applies to you listening to me right now. Be careful how you use someone else's property. If you are an employee working for someone, be careful how you manage time at work. Be sure your absences are genuine. Stop stealing materials from work and bring it home. Amen. Amen. The same we use students who go on internship. <laughs> Let me see talk to students who God can expose them a lot. If you have no problem with taking gloves and bringing home, very soon when you are recruited, you'll be able to pull down the whole structure. Okay? I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Repent. God never gives a complete thing to any manager. God never gives you anything in his complete form to manage. He showed me how big this ministry will look like. So wonderful. And guess what I thought? It would just be like that. Uh oh, starting is crazy. It's frightening. And while you prove to be diligent, he increases. Prove to be diligent, he increases. What has happened in this church before one year, which will happen? Many to the second place to the next was one year. Oh yeah. And you will hear the story of your amazing. So many things are most ministries take two or three years before they ever get even an amplifier the mixer. They exist like a cell. We are literally like a cell, but the teachings in this place are so outstanding that it has global influence. Yes. I mean outstanding. Yes. Show me anybody who sits down to listen to what I teach. I show you someone whose perspectives about the kingdom of God, the kingdom message of Jesus are completely changed. He taught them an important principle of management. Amen. Amen. Please let me say that again. God never gives you anything in its complete form. Say two fishes. Say five loaves of bread. Was that incomplete or not? Yet multiplied. Praise God. Next thing is that effective management is your promotion ticket. Next thing is that what you mismanage, you motivate God to take it away from you. <laughs> I'm concerned about you who pray so much. Lord, give me one million. Give me this one. Give me that one. Okay, what did you do with the other one? Can you give us a report? Which among you as a parent, a daughter will just come and say, that's my daughter right there. Tomorrow when she starts playing around, she comes, give me sweets, I give. After two hours, she comes, give me more sweets, I just give. After three hours, she, she may not come and not even ask me. Just take the whole packet, not so. If I can't sit her and say, wait a minute, you took the other ones, what did you do with it? I'm a bad parent. I must hold her to account because I need her to understand the principles of discipline. That's why certain things God will not give it to you now till you mature. What's the use of a young man, 17 years old, who is not who doesn't yet know how to drive a car, to buy a good truck and give to do what they do? Therefore, he will give resources to people who have not learned management, they will abuse it and they will cost the lives of others. 